Hello children, welcome to my chemistry class. I am Javashri Ghosh, teacher in Demonstration Multipurpose School, Bhuvaneshwar. I am immensely pleased to have you all with me. I know children how you feel at home, but we teachers are trying our best to make you comfortable and help you in your studies. Children, today we will do the third chapter of your chemistry book, science book, that is atoms and molecules. I would like that you people be ready with your notebooks and pens when we start learning this chapter together. Okay children, let us start atoms and molecules. Children, Today we will be discussing development of concept of atom, laws of chemical combination, Dalton's atomic theory, limitations of Dalton's atomic theory. These are the topics we will be discussing today. Okay? Now children, do you know the concept of atom is not a very new one. Even in ancient period, many Indian philosophers and foreign philosophers, they had given certain postulates about atoms. Some Indian philosophers like Maharshi Kannad, he postulated that if we keep on dividing the matter and then matter was called and now also it is called as Padarth. Okay? we will get smaller and smaller particles and soon we will achieve the smallest particle and it was named as Parmanu which may not divide further. They predicted that atom is the smallest particle of a matter. Okay. Padukha Pakudha sorry Pakudha Katyama, another philosopher, he postulated that there are various forms of matter because the particles of matter exist together in combination and that you know now also it is there. Not only the Indian philosophers but Greek philosophers like Democritus, and Leucippus, they suggested that when we keep on dividing the matter, there comes a time when no more division is possible, division of that particles. Okay, such particles they called it as atoms, which means being invisible. If we go on dividing and dividing and dividing, suppose for an example, if I take a piece of paper and I start cutting it, cutting it, cutting it till the last bit of paper, till mechanically we can cut it. But a time will come, we cannot do further. Okay, that part of the matter or the paper I am talking about is known as an atom. But all these ideas were not backed up by many experimental pieces of evidence until Anthony L. Lavoisier provided two laws of chemical combination. Children, you know, science is a subject which doesn't go by philosophy of facts. It needs experimentation, observation, recording and all those things. Okay, children? This Antonio Laurent de Lavoisier, he is also known as Antonio Lavoisier after the French Revolution, was a French nobleman and chemist who was central to the 18th century chemical revolution and who had a large influence on both history of chemistry and history of biology. He is widely considered in popular literature as the father of modern chemistry. Children, Antony Lavoisier is father of modern chemistry. It is generally accepted that 
some facts we'll discuss some facts about lavoisier it is better to know about a scientist it is generally accepted that lavoisier's great accomplishments in chemistry stem largely from his changing the science from a qualitative to a quantitative one why qualitative to a quantitative one children because then they had known about certain compounds certain elements but there was no facts regarding that and that too there was no enlisting of the things so he had done those procedures lavoisier is most noted for his discovery of role of oxygen what oxygen plays in combustion he recognized and named oxygen in 1778 and hydrogen in 1783 and opposed the phlogiston theory what is this phlogiston theory let me tell you children before lavoisier people used to believe when a thing was burning or was under combustion they believed that those combustible materials they had something like fire inside them okay then it was believed that way but lavoisier he proved the role of oxygen and he opposed phlogiston theory there is no such fire inside the combustible substances it is all due to oxygen okay lavoisier helped construct the metric system the metric system one we do in a mathematics wrote the first extensive list of elements and helped to reform chemical nomenclature that is being used today he predicted the existence of silicon in 1787 and was also the first to establish that sulfur was an element in 1777 rather than a compound before this people used to believe that sulfur was a compound but lavoisier he said no it's a element he discovered that although matter may change its form or shape its mass always remains the same then he gave the laws of chemical combination what is chemical combination children when two or more uh, reactants that is two or more material matter they react together and form a product we call them chemical combination for example like uh, when uh, two uh, compounds or elements they react they are known as reactants and they form a, a final some uh, matter is formed that is known as product this is a chemical combination now laws of chemical combination are first law let us discuss law of conservation of mass mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction according to the law of conservation of mass matter can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction it remains conserved what does it actually mean it means that mass of reactants will be equal to the mass of products for this children as i have told you uh, science without demonstration without experiment is incomplete now we'll perform an experiment let me tell you the activity first in this activity what we do children uh let us take some copper sulfate solution in a conical flask and some sodium carbonate solution in an ignition tube i'll tell you what are this then we hang the ignition tube in the flask by a thread okay find the mask sorry find the mass of the flask on a balance using a balance then we tilt the ignition tube and reaction takes place and sodium sulfate and copper carbonate are formed then we find the mass mass of the flask it will be seen that the sum of the masses of the reactants will be equal to the mass of the products okay now see in this experimental setup we have a weighing machine we have conical flask we have the ignition tube the small test tube is known as the ignition tube 
law of conservation of mass disease okay and when we mix that ignition tube is dropped in the the chemicals in the ignition tube are dropped in the solution what do we get we get sodium sulfate and copper carbonate copper carbonate is the precipitate formed children now i am going to demonstrate uh, one such experiment but i have taken but different type of chemicals children i am emphasizing to do this here because in class 9th you have the practical regarding this okay but i know children during this time it is not possible to have a practical class or you cannot visit the laboratory okay so let me try out with one or two experiments for you okay children first let me show you what i have with me children i have got copper sulfate solution with copper sulfate with me okay and to save time i have kept ready the solution i take a uh, one sp uh, small spatula of uh, copper sulfate then i add some water and i make this solution similarly i have sodium carbonate this is the sodium carbonate powder inside that and i have made one solution of sodium carbonate just for saving my time okay next what do i do this is a conical flask as you see in the picture this is a conical flask okay let me add some copper sulfate solution here in this conical flask let me add some copper sulfate solution you see this such a bright blue color okay children i have taken this much copper sulfate solution then with copper sulfate solution i will be adding sodium carbonate not with this now but first let me take it in the ignition tube you see this is the small test tube is known as the ignition tube wiping it because it should not mix with the solution now okay let me wipe it so that the solution doesn't get mixed with the copper sulfate solution solution in sodium carbonate doesn't get mixed with it now now just let me drop this slowly so that it doesn't get mixed okay children this is what i do now let me weigh this children the weight comes up to be 39.885 the weight comes out to be 39.885 yes it is constant at 39.885 let me take it out okay now what do i do i just tilt it it's not just possible to tilt it i'll mix this children can you see this beautiful copper carbonate solution okay see this beautiful copper carbonate solution okay this is a precipitate formed the product is a precipitate formed you can see the precipitate here children 39 point something 39.8 okay now here see here children we have a bit difference in the weight this is all just due to dust and air resistance and all those things minor variation in weight can be accommodated in experiments okay children so this goes with the agreement of law of conservation of mass i will show you one more experiment children uh, before that 
uh, you would like to see the precipitate formed. If I show you the beautiful precipitate, I I'll mix these two. That is sodium carbonate and copper sulfate solution. See the precipitate. Lovely precipitate is formed. What is that precipitate? Two insoluble liquids. These two liquids are not soluble with each other. They form layers and this is how our precipitate is formed. See a lovely precipitate. Okay, children. Children, let us do one more experiment with another pair of chemicals. Children, I have taken lead acetate. Okay, less lead acetate, I have made a solution of lead acetate just to save time. Okay, now one more solution that is potassium iodide. I have made a solution of potassium iodide also. Let us use these two. Now, let me take some lead acetate in this conical flask. Okay, what shall we form? Lead acetate plus potassium iodide. We will get lead iodide and potassium acetate as products. And children, you know the lead iodide is a precipitate with lovely color. Let us see what color we are getting. In the last experiment, we have got a greenish blue color of copper carbonate. Light uh, greenish and blue is maximum. Here, what do we get? This is uh, potassium. This is lead acetate solution. This is this amount of lead acetate I have taken. Okay, in this ignition tube, let me add some potassium iodide. That is potassium iodide. Okay, see you. Now I'll drop it this way. Slowly I am putting it so that it doesn't get mixed up. I will wait now. Let's see what's the wait now. The weight comes out to be 39.074. Please note it down. It is 39.07. Oh, it has changed. 39.079 is the constant weight. 39.07. It's very uh, let's take it to be thirty nine point zero seven six. Okay, final weight. It's not varying. <clears throat> now let me tilt this. Let me just drop this one. Children, can you see what type of precipitate is formed? A lovely yellow precipitate of lead iodide. You might have read in your books also, the color of this precipitate is yellow color. Okay, let me wait again. It comes out to be children 39.066. 39.066. Please note it down children so that you can find the variation. Children, uh, for reactants, when we subtract this uh, weight of reactants and products, we get very um, minute difference and this difference is admissible in this type of because there are certain environmental constraints when we do this experiment dust is there air resistance is there so bit of variation is there okay so that is admissible this type of error we generally come across so in both the experiments what did we see we saw that 
mass of reactants is equal to the mass of the products. Okay, children. And here, along with this, you had your practical portion also. Let me show you again the beautiful yellow precipitate once more. See the lovely yellow precipitate, children. This lovely yellow precipitate, insoluble. See, one solution is the two insoluble solution, lead precipitate and potassium acetate. Okay. Lead iodide is yellow precipitate. So, children, we are finished with this uh, law of conservation of mass demonstration. Let's go for the important part and you'll be very excited to do this, I know. Children, let's solve this numerical. Based on this experiment, I have got a numerical question for you. In a reaction, 5.3 grams of sodium carbonate reacted with 6 grams of acetic acid. Okay. The products were 2.2 grams of carbon dioxide, 0.9 grams of water and 8.2 grams of sodium acetate. Show that these observations are in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. So, let's see what is the total weight of the reactants and total weight of the products. The equation is here, sodium carbonate plus acetic acid will give rise to sodium acetate plus carbon dioxide plus water. Now see here, 5.3 grams plus 6 grams, the total comes up to be 11.3 grams, that is the LHS. What about the RHS, the product? 8.2 grams plus 2.2 grams plus 0 0.9 grams, simple. You can use your notebooks and pens, children. The total weight of the products is same as 11.3 grams. So, is it in agreement with the law of conservation of mass? Yes, it is in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. Okay, children? You can solve similar examples from your book also. Now, let's do the second law of chemical combination. It is the law of constant proportion or law of definite proportion. We can call it both ways. What does this law say? This law says the elements are always present in definite proportion by mass in a chemical substance. Here it says they are present in definite proportion by mass means uh, you know children suppose uh, when these laws were proposed there was no concept of atomic mass or atomic weight they used to find the atom uh, weight of uh, atoms or the weight of elements not atom weights of elements or compounds by just comparing them for example suppose they took 9 grams of water 9 grams of water and they could find that 1 gram of hydrogen when reacts with 8 grams of oxygen it forms 9 grams of water okay then they found out when they uh, experimented with 18 grams of water they could find out that 2 grams of hydrogen and 16 grams of oxygen they combine to form 18 grams of water so by various experiments they could conclude that in water hydrogen and oxygen they are present in the ratio 1 is to 8 by mass okay when 1 plus 8 will give you 9 grams of water 2 plus 16 will give you 18 grams of water okay so they are in the ratio 1 is to 8 similarly they conducted various other experiments with carbon dioxide carbon monoxide and all those compounds and they concluded that a pure chemical compound contains the same elements combined together in a fixed proportion by mass and is given by the law of definite proportion for example, if we take water from river or pond or ocean both 
has oxygen and hydrogen in the same proportion. They experimented with the water from different sources and they could see that 9 grams of water contained 1 gram of hydrogen and 8 grams of oxygen. That is, they are in the ratio 1 is to 8 by mass. Ok children? Let us go for a numerical for this so that your concept would be quite clear. Now, hydrogen and oxygen combine in the ratio 1 is to 8 by mass to form water that we have discussed children. What mass of oxygen gas would be required to react completely with 3 grams of hydrogen gas? Think children, it is very easy. It is just simple unitary method children. When hydrogen is 1 gram, oxygen is 8 grams by mass and we form water 9 grams. When oxygen Hydrogen is 3 grams. What will be the mass of oxygen? Into 8, that is 24 grams. Simple unitary method. Ok, children? So, 3 grams of hydrogen reacts with 24 grams of oxygen to form how many grams of uh, water? 3 plus 24, 27 grams of water. I think, children, you are clear with this. Okay, now let us move to another part of uh, theory of atoms and it was given by John Dalton FRS. Dalton was an English chemist, physicist and meteorologist. He is best known for introducing the atomic theory into chemistry and for his research into color blindness. He had also researched on color blindness. That is why this color blindness is also sometimes referred to as Daltonism in his honor. John Dalton was born into a Quaker family from Eaglesfield near Cockermouth in Cumberland, England. His father was a weaver. He received his early education from his father and from Quaker John Fletcher who ran a private school in a nearby village of Potsaw Hall. Dalton's family was too poor to support him for long and he began to earn his living from the age of 10 in the service of wealthy local Quaker Elihu Robinson. Children, I am sharing all these things with you. It is a, you can say, sort of motivation. These great personalities who all have contributed to our education, to our subjects, what type of lifestyle they had and what they had to undergo, how they lived to come to this stage. This is a this is an inspiration for you all children. John Dalton proposed an atomic theory which acted as an explanation for the above two laws. Above two laws were given by Lavoisier but it was just facts were stated but John Dalton what he did he explained by certain theories. As per the theory all matter whether it is an element, a compound or a mixture consists of tiny invisible particles called atoms. So, we call it Dalton's atomic theory. Now, let us see what are the postulates of atomic theory by John Dalton. The matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms that cannot be divided further. We have discussed that. Atoms are the teeniest particle and that cannot be divided further. First children, let us see and learn the postulates. Then we will come to the description of that. Atoms are neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. Atoms of an element exhibit same nature. They have 
the same size, mass and character. Children, he also postulated atoms of different elements exhibit variant nature. They do not have same characteristics. Atoms form compounds by combining in a ratio of whole numbers. And we'll see that how. A compound contains a constant number and kind of atoms. These were the six postulates by John Dalton about atom. This is known as postulates of atomic theory. Now let's discuss one by one. Atom is made up of tiny particles called ma atoms. Matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms that cannot be divided. As I had discussed earlier, if we take a piece of paper and tear it and tear it and tear it and we will come to a time when we cannot break it further and that entity is known as an atom. Here also you see children, suppose this uh, figure is an uh, matter, then how it gets divided? See here, division is possible, this is also possible, this is also possible. But the last part, this we cannot divide it further. This is indivisible particle and that's an atom. Okay, let me tell you one thing here. Atom of a matter possesses all the characteristics of that matter. Okay. Atoms are neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. Okay. Suppose we see a chemical reaction, element A reacts with element B, then they form element AB, a compound AB, okay? Here you see element A as a whole is present, element B is present in reactants and in products what happened? Both all the uh, atoms of element A and element B are there in the compound AB. Atoms of an element exhibit same nature. They have the same size, mass and character. Here suppose this is an element A and there are various atoms inside it. You can see the atoms inside it. Okay. All the atoms have same. Here I have considered the color and the size. The possible things. They have the same nature also. Okay. Here in element A you have same size of, same color of atoms. Now, atoms of different elements exhibit variant nature. They do not have same characteristics. You can see children in element A, you have different types of, uh, you, uh, different uh, lots of atoms, okay, and their shape and size are equal. In element B, you have lots of atoms whose shape and size are equal. But what happens is the or is all the atoms of element A is similar with all the atoms of element B? No, they vary. Okay, different elements have different uh, types of atoms and they vary in their characteristics also. Here you see they are blue and little bigger atoms. Here you see they are green and little smaller. This is just for demonstration purpose. Okay, children? Now, Atoms from, form compounds by combining in a ratio of whole numbers. We have known children H2O is water in whole numbers. Okay, Two atoms of hydrogen combines with one atom of oxygen to give H2O. Similarly, one atom, you can see in the screen, uh, one atom of carbon combines with two atoms of oxygen to give carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide in any form from anywhere will have this combination only. And they combine in whole numbers H2O2 hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Uh, MgO, NH4Cl, all these are combining in the ratio of whole numbers. Okay. We never find H2.3O or C5.4. O. We don't find this type of combinations. Actually, they combine in a ratio of whole numbers. 
children a compound contains a constant number of kind of atoms okay like i had discussed water water is two atoms of hydrogen combined with one atom of oxygen to form water water from any source it may be a river it may be a well it may be tap water it may be sea water it may be rain water but water from any source will have the combination of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen okay children children dalton has given his own theory and postulates but there might be some limitations also people may not agree with that but later on there were lots of development and people disagreed with dalton's atomic theory but remember one thing this is the base these are the basic postulates of chemistry that is theory of atoms but there are certain limitations let's discuss what are the limitations it does not account for subatomic particles later on after dalton many other scientists came and they could find out they said that atom has some subatomic particles like electrons protons and neutrons okay children but dalton had not explained about that let me tell you one thing atoms of an element exhibit the same char character of that particular element for example atoms of oxygen will show the characteristics of oxygen atoms of sulfur will show the characteristics of sulfur but remember one thing protons electrons and neutrons are same in all the atoms they are the subatomic particles we agree but they are same in all the atoms okay number might be different but the characters are the same their charge and their weight are same in all the atoms one more limitation it does not account for isotopes what are isotopes you will read in later classes isotopes means they have the um, isotopes of an element have different atomic masses atomic number is same but different atomic masses that is for example in hydrogen they have hydrogen deuterium and tritium but dalton's atomic theory could not account for this one more limitation it does not account for isobars what are isobars children isobars means two different elements will have same atomic mass these things were developed later on this theory states that the mass of the atoms of two different elements must differ but it is possible for two different elements to share the same mass number such atoms are called isobars argon 40 and calcium also has atomic mass 40 all these were discovered later on one more thing elements need not combine in simple whole number ratios to form compounds this was postulated by dalton but later on it was found that in some organic compounds for example sugar sucrose it is c11 h22o11 like large number of carbon chains are there one more limitation is there this theory does not account for allotropes the difference in the properties of diamond and graphite both of which contain only carbon cannot be explained by dalton's atomic theory carbon is a non metal we know that carbon is soft but diamond diamond and graphite are the allotropes of carbon but diamond is hard and a shining whereas carbon is not graphite can conduct electricity whereas carbon cannot okay children these are the limitations of dalton's atomic theory children before coming to an let's have the main thing of this part of discussion these are certain assignments home assignments for you i can i know you'll be able to do it because these are discussed and are quite easy 
which postulate of dalton atomic theory is the result of law of conservation of mass that you can write very well second which postulate of dalton atomic theory can explain the law of definite proportion that is also proposed there then comes a simple numerical question a 0.24 grams of sample of compound of oxygen and boron was found by analysis to contain 0.096 grams of boron and 0.144 grams of oxygen calculate the percentage decomposition of compound by weight what you have to do here children just read the question is very simple you find the percentage of boron how do you find it 0.096 divided by 0.24 into 100 okay simple what about oxygen 0.144 divided by 0.24 grams into 100 you find the percentage of composition of these uh, oxygen and boron simple you can do it the fourth question is bit tricky when 3 grams of carbon is burnt in 8 grams of oxygen 11 grams of carbon dioxide is produced okay what mass of carbon dioxide will be formed when 3 grams of carbon is burnt in 50 grams of oxygen which law of chemical combination will govern your answer you know children when 3 grams of carbon burns with 8 grams of oxygen it will give carbon dioxide 11 grams okay that is a fixed part fixed composition here also 3 grams of carbon in burnt in 50 grams of oxygen is given but you know children 3 grams of carbon can burn with only 8 grams of oxygen to give carbon dioxide okay so here also it will burn with 8 grams of carbon dioxide and remaining 42 grams will remain as such i think children you can do this very well so that's all for today sit down with your pen and paper try to solve this assignments and stay hope children stay happy and stay safe thank you all